Well, in the first part of the course, we've covered a lot of ground. You now know how to classify carbonate rocks, you now know how to classify porosity, and you know the relationship between porosity and permeability in carbonates. In the second part of the course, we are going to focus on the depositional environment of carbonates and the rock record. So we're going to look at geometries of carbonates, we're going to look at Fechi's model, and we're going to talk about sequence stratigraphy for the different types of carbonate factories that we've described before. You ready? Let's go to Texas. Well, howdy, Texas. The cliffs behind me are part of the Guadalupe Mountain National Park. This is an area I came to teach for many years. The Guadalupian is part of the Permian. So we, we're looking here at the top at Permian carbonates on top of Permian clastics. And hopefully by the end of this class, you will understand why I selected this particular outcrop to talk about geometries in carbonates. So geometries, we've seen already the Maldive in our first class. I said these are isolated carbonate atolls. So one potential geometry for carbonates is as an isolated platform in the middle of, a, of an ocean. But there's also many carbonates that are actually attached to continents. And when they're attached to continent, multiple geometries are possible. And we'll try to understand here what controls those geometries. So if we look at the potential geometries, on the one hand, we have the ability to have shelf, so relatively flat top carbonate systems. And the classic shelf is the rimmed shelf. What is a rimmed shelf? A rimmed shelf is effectively an attached platform that has a rim of corals or framework builders. It, it need not be corals. We will see that this can change through time. There's also the option to have a flat top platform without a rim. So that's a non-rimmed shelf. Those exist and we'll see some examples of those. But other than shelves, you can have ramps and ramps can either be distally steepened. That means you have a relatively low angle ramp at first, but towards the end of that low angle ramp, you have a steeper angle or you could just have a homoclinal ramp, which is the, essentially a gently steeping ramp all the way down to the basin. So you can see that we have a continuum of geometries here from a flat top attached rim shelf all the way to a homoclinal shelf. And we're gonna try to see what controls those geometries. Because one thing that's interesting is that this continuum of geometry can exist all at the same spot. So you see here a beautiful image from the south of Florida, and you can, you can just about see the Bahamas Island there. And what's interesting is that we have a continuum of geometries here. So we have a carbonate ramp behind or at the back of Florida, but we also have a rimmed platform. If you look at the southern margin of Florida, it's effectively a rimmed platform with a steep-sided steep geometries. And of course, the Bahamas themselves are isolated platform. Now, these three geometries are within a few hundred miles of each other. So what controls this? So let's have a look. There's a Beautiful paper by Louis Pomar that I recommend, you have the reference on the slide here, that goes into the detail of what controls geometry. And, and I think it's a really a, a good read. So it's a little bit complicated, so we'll, we'll take it step by step. So here you have all the different controls on the geometry of a carbonate buildup. And you can see that you can characterize the geometry of this buildup by the profile. So that means whether it's you know, steep sided geometry, flat top, or a, a ramp homoclinal, homoclinal or um, distally steepened. And you can also look at the size of this uh, particular uh, buildup. Is it a big platform? Is it a small platform? Are we looking at a giant um, empiric type platform like in the Middle East, etc.? and whether or not the, your, your um, platform is attached to a continent, okay? 
And there's really two main family of process that control this. One is the inherited topography, and the other one is the location of where sediments accumulate, um, known here as the locus, which is Latin for position or location of accumulation. So let's look at each one of those individually. Let's start with the inherited topography. So the inherited topography can impact both the profile of the, the uh, buildup, the size of the buildup, and whether or not the buildup is attached. So whether or not the buildup is attached is only controlled by the inherited topography. The inherited topography is controlled itself by two factors. It's the tectonic setting, so the tectonic history of the era in which the carbonates grow, and the lower order of sea level cycles. So it makes sense that tectonic controls whether or not a platform is attached to a continent. But inherited topography, as you can see, also impacts profile and size. Now, the locus of accumulation is controlled by a number of factors, but chiefly it comes down to two things. It comes down to the type and the amount of sediment being produced, which is controlled by the biota, so by biology. And the biota are controlled by, the, by biological evolution, by climate, because climate determines what type of biota can grow, and by the hydraulic regime and energy of the environment, so how much wave energy you have, chiefly. And then the locus of accumulation is also controlled itself by the hydraulic regime and energy of the system, which is a factor of climate. And these different controls change through time. So you can see that we have a number of control that can impact on the size, the profile, and the attachment or not of, of a carbonate uh, platform. So that's a highly complex nonlinear system. That's why we have such a diverse range of profile. 